Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my fellow YouTubian people. This is Bar 11970. Thank you, as always, for watching my video, and enjoy your day if you haven't already. All right, guys, first thing before I start talking about the medals, um, I just want to say that message has been received. Um, I just want to let people know I wasn't doubting myself. I wasn't uh, thinking about quitting or anything. I just actually do appreciate my subscribers. Um, we have a close-knit family here, and like any family, we're going to have people that love each other, people that tolerate each other, people that hate each other, uh, people that just get along for whatever reason, but they do stick around. So good, bad, and indifferent. Um, I do respect people's opinions, and um, everybody pretty much said to continue what I'm doing, and they understand that I am not a professional, and they just listen to me because for whatever individual reasons they have. So message has been received, and I thank you. And it just shows that I want this to be more of an interactive channel where um, my subscribers do have a say. And I know there were some people that said, you know, oh, your subscribers don't care about you. Um, I don't actually believe that because in times that I had some problems in my life, a lot, there was a lot of support and a lot of love. Um, I'm not expecting anybody to all of a sudden hop on a plane and, you know, come save my life or anything. You know, let's keep it in perspective. But I think this channel is really growing into a direction where there's a lot of caring, a lot of love. Um, you know, there are some people that are here for the wrong reasons, but I can't control what they do, nor do I want to bother. So thank you very much, and I will continue. And um, just to make the statement, uh, for anybody new, I am not a professional I'm not a trader. I don't work for the government. I don't work for Wall Street. I'm just giving my opinions of what I do. I'm not an investor. I'm not a stockbroker. And I primarily invest in metals in the physical form to protect my future against the potential collapse of the U.S. dollar and the economy. Whether that happens or not remains to be seen, but better to be safe than men. Sorry. All right. With all that out of the way, I've noticed something that I have not seen. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Um, I've been studying the market as far as gold and silver prices since about 2006 when I first started getting into coin collecting. Um, and right now we're seeing a little bit of a separation between gold and silver. Um, I've never seen this kind of distance in between because they usually tend to follow one another. Um, but right now we're seeing gold at um, roughly around 1192, under 1200. So it's down about $9 right now. Now, normally, when a metal is down, the rest of the metals tend to follow. Everything else is on an uptrend. We see silver right now up 32 cents, roughly around 1885. So if you know anything about the Back to the Future movies, there you go. There's a little tidbit right there. Uh, platinum's up about 4 bucks at 1323. Palladium is up about $2 at 646. As far as silver is concerned, I really think we are at or near the bottom, in my opinion. Um, from some videos I've been watching recently and a new person I just subscribed to, great information, by the way. Um, they are, as far as the mining companies, underwater when it comes to silver. Their average costs are over $20 after all is said and done as far as fees are paid, taxes have to be paid, etc., so they're paying over $20, between $20 and sometimes up to $25 an ounce just to mine it. And with these prices, they're going underwater. They can't survive. So either the price has to start rising, the, the mines will stop production or at least slow down production. Workers are going to get fired. Some mining companies may go out of business, which makes you really think, is this being done on purpose to have that happen so uh, banks can come in and confiscate some kind of land that hasn't been able to been paid for. You know, banks love to do that. They love to give out all this free money at first and give you this promise of a wonderful economy, like they're trying to tell you on the news these days, um, knowing all full when well that the bubble is about to burst, just not exactly knowing what day that will be, at least as far as we're concerned, we're going to be seeing a lot of mining companies probably going out of business if this trend continues. So I really think the reason that you're seeing the separation is silver probably has gotten very close to its bottom. So uh, gold, 
the way this trend's going, it looks like it could get to the $1,000 mark. So basically, at this point, I'm going to be sitting around waiting to see if gold hits around the $1,000 mark. Uh, again, that's going to be underwater for most uh, mining companies because uh, from the charts that I saw yesterday, that these mining companies have speculative charts on how much it costs to mine based on the price of gold and the lowest charts go to about 1600 so with prices this low that's showing that they are even their figures are not going to really be accurate for themselves because they're basing it on something that's over four hundred dollar difference and declining so i'm going to be sitting around and waiting a little bit more to see what's going to be happening um, this is going to be an interesting summer usually the summer tends to be stagnant for gold and silver uh, if it stays like this, that's really showing that um, things are going to get interesting really soon. And on a side note, um, I've told people that my mother is a broker and uh, been in real estate since the 1980s. Well, she was thinking about selling her house, which I told her, um, you know, now's not a good time to be buying a house because of what's going on. She agrees with me. And um, before we talked about this, she was trying to get this house it was um, a foreclosure that she could get a really nice house, a huge house for actually about 125 it was listed for. Uh, it was a short sale. And she put in a bid for like 90 And they said basically have to wait for the bank to approve it to see if they would, you know, accept her offer. Um, she just came back to me yesterday and told me normally it takes – Sometimes up to six months for a bank to return a decision on a price on a short sale. She got the request at 109000 three days after she made a bid. And she said that's definitely not normal. Normally on a short sale it takes anywhere from three to six months for the bank to even consider it. They did it right away. And what that's suggesting to me is they're trying to get rid of as many properties as they can, get the sheep to come in and buy up as many houses as they can, watch the bubble burst, watch everybody lose all of the money they just invested, end up foreclosing on their houses so the banks can take them back again. Uh, it's, it's a pattern at this point. It's so ridiculous. I can't see how the normal sheep out there can't see it, and it's sad. So anybody looking to buy property right now, unless you got a property where you're making a lot of money or you're doing rentals like one of my subscribers was talking to me about, if you're making good money on it, keep it. Otherwise, my recommendation, because I used to be a real estate agent, with what I'm seeing right now, it's just a matter of time before that bubble bursts and your property is going to lose value. Now, that's not going to be everywhere, because like the three most important things in real estate is location, location, location. So if you have a beach house or if you have some kind of house that had celebrities living in it at one point or it has some kind of history to it, or again, if you're in an area where you can get some really good rentals, you know, you could make some good money on it. I prefer to stay away from rentals because especially in a bad economy, if the, the, those rental people decide to no longer want to pay anymore, you know, the renters have more rights than the owners of the houses. So, you know, that could cause a lot of problems, especially if you're uh, doing rentals for Section 8s. Yeah, that could get a little dicey at times, and they tend to like to destroy the houses if they're going to leave. So be careful with that. So that's just my recommendation. That's my humble opinion. Um, please don't take every single thing I say as a major decision for you to do anything in your life without research. You're solely responsible for what you do and don't do. I want to make that perfectly clear to everybody. I'm just telling you my opinions and what I plan on doing. What you do is totally up to you. So if you appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate when people do that. Leave your comments after the beep, and um, let's see what happens with the gold and silver market. should be interesting. All right? Thanks for watching, guys. Hope I've helped you a little bit. Peace.